first of all, sexy Zoom voice. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, you definitely should look into voiceover acting. I need the connect for our listeners. Yeah, Dirty Skittles Anybody. needs a connection to voiceover acting. The perfect way to get out of her shitty job. <laughs> I need like a, like one-liners to read, like audition. This is my auditioning tape. <laughs> Can we just pull a, pull a line out of one of your spicy so, books? Somebody else would have to pull the line. Because if you give it to me, I immediately want the most horrible, like, you know, not horrible. That's good, depending on if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> this warning this season is not pg so yeah yesterday i realized that i need an assistant so we had some scheduling conflicts and this all came about during my day job right where i also had some conflicts going on and both of them needed, yeah both of them needed my attention like right away so i had to flip a coin and figure out which one i was going to work on at that very moment, I realized that I need an assistant, somebody that can handle that stuff during the day when I can't really get to it because I still work, right? I, I have a day yeah. job, but like stuff with a podcast is also important, especially now because we have zero spots left for 2024, like zero. Yeah. How crazy is that? And it's May. And it's May. And like how the fuck this happened is beyond me. But I think the other cool thing that happened this week, too, is that we hit 400,000 downloads and incredibly humbling. Excuse me while I have a panic. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I literally, you know what? I'm in a healthy state of delusion. <laughs> I'm like nobody, I still am like nobody's listening. Although I was talking to a coworker. We won't say her name here, but I'm pretty sure she probably reached out and told you the story. Talking to a coworker and I've, Literally, this is how I blacked out shit that makes me nervous. But I swore she said she was somewhere listening to it. And just a complete stranger was like, oh, my God, I love that podcast. And she told me that. And I was like, oh, I gotta go. It's like Microsoft Teams just did something's wrong. Hang up. Oh, it fucked me up to the day. Yeah, I, I know it fucked you up, but... <laughs> Like, does it fuck you up, like, in a humbling way, or? I think you and I have briefly talked about this, probably not while we're recording, where it's like, it's one thing, okay, this is completely a me-you thing. It's one thing for me to encourage your story, right? Like, I'm like, this is important. She's got a lot to say. Like, this is wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm like, yes, do it, girl, do it. Like, I'm cheering you on. But then when you hear from other people that, hey, someone-so really likes your podcast or a complete stranger is like, hey, that podcast is great. I'm like, oh, yeah, people are actually listening. I'm like, this is actually helping somebody. And it freaks me out. It freaks me out because I'm like, oh, yeah. Like I become very self-aware. Like, what am I saying? Like, what am I putting out there? People listening, like it's kind of trippy. And that's kind of like why I don't tell you anymore when a new article <laughs> goes out or You're like she can't go. or anything like that because I'm afraid to poke the bear that will go into a full-on panic attack. So <laughs> what I do is I just put them into like bundles and then, then I like send you a text and I'm like, hey, listen, we got like three new articles. Can you go read these? Yeah. After you've maybe taken a gummy? Right. Shit, maybe not. Because then I might get more into my head. Who knows? We'll have to test it out. <laughs> do you, let's do a quick intro and then we can uh, dig in. You ready? Let's do it. I, yeah. I'm going to do the intro because I am all in. And You're ready. You should just roll today, bro. I'm just here. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Three, two, two, one. One. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On Our Heads. Today, it's just Dirty Skittles and I, and we are going to recap season six. How the fuck did that happen? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. It was just yesterday that we recorded the very first one that we never aired, remember? Right. We recorded it. We listened to it 
back and you were like, no, I need a new mic. <laughs> You're like, I need a mic. Let's try that again. And then we tried to recreate it and it just wasn't the same. It wasn't. And this, I think we laughed a bunch. And this was all started because of some fucked up story you and I were telling each other and like, hey, we should record a podcast. Okay. A month later, we dropped our first episode. And now we're in season six and we're all the way up to almost 70 episodes. I know. That's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. But I love it. And I love our Saturdays together. And I love meeting all these new amazing guests. Yeah. And the whole... Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say just how grateful and how like cool it is that people are like we want to record with y'all yeah and like people are willing to wait we are completely booked for 2024 it's crazy it's wild and every day i get at least four emails of people that want to get on the get on the podcast so starting mid-july we are going to stop doing pre-recordings because we will have enough content to take us into february but I will start the recordings again sometime in late October. And because there are people waiting to to talk to us. And I'm like, we're a little booked right now. But we still want to talk to you. And you can sign up for the newsletter to kind of see where we're at, what's going on in our lives. And over the last couple of weeks, I've had about 10 new subscribers to our newsletter. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. How does it feel for you? Because this was not only just like a joke amongst friends, right. but you for sure came out of a dark place. You're much better now and you're sharing your story. So like, how does this feel for you? It's very surreal. So surreal. And like never in a million fucking years did I think that I would be doing a podcast let alone sharing my story, but it's so fucking healing for me. Like, I'm so thankful to be alive. Every every single day, I'm so thankful to be here and to be inspiring and to get other people to share their journeys and make people feel less terrified about their own shit they're going through because it's scary. Depression sucks. And I think, well, I know that we're making a difference. Like your story, right? Somebody said that they love our podcast a complete stranger you know because when we started this it was just friends and family and now we have best-selling authors we have morning show hosts we have you know people from all walks of life and the fact that we ended up having to get a PR firm because I just couldn't do all this shit myself I mean I tried I did really good for almost a year you did so good (laughs) not really good I think we are here because of your effort and the work that you put in. But I love doing this. Like when recording Saturday comes up, I get so excited. I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. I never go to just bed so at 10. You're, just so you're fresh. And so ready fresh today. and ready to go. And, you know, I get to do this with my best friend. And not yeah. everybody gets to do this. And, you know, people say to me all the time that we just really land well. and that. You know, yeah. you ask those really hard questions and then I come back sometimes with a snarky answer, maybe not, but it's so healing. And when I'm done recording on Saturdays, like I, I'm at a, an 11 because I just feel like I've learned something new, a new tip, a new technique and, yeah. and how people got out of some of the darkest places in their life to, to get to someplace better. And, you know, I just want to give people hope. Because life really is better on the other side of depression. Yeah, I know. And there you yeah. go. Gonna make me cry again. I feel a little, oh my gosh. Feel a little we, tear. What are we in? What, 10 minutes in? Yeah, you're, I got a little tear in my eye because of you. But, yeah, I, I, you know, I want to give a shout out to our family because yeah. we, you know, we spend a lot of time on the podcast. I took away some of the responsibilities from Dirty Skittles, so she can you know spend time with her son and work at her not so fantastic job but i love it 
And, you know, I'm in a point in my life where I get to not only work at my dream job, I, I get to follow my passion also. And it's funny, my wife, Lisa the lesbian, she's like, I've never seen you work so hard on something you don't get paid for. And, you know, that truly was our, has been our mission since day one, is that, you know, I am so passionate about this. And we're both really good at this. Not to, you know, throw an, an ego blast out there, but we're really good. And we bring out, like, we bring out, like, the best in all of our guests. And, you know, Heather reached out to me the other day. And she's like, I listened to Jackie's episode. I was just, I loved it. And every episode that we have, they all have something awesome to say about what we're doing and how we're helping other people. So. Yeah. Ja Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie. She was that awesome. Was so cool for me because I remember literally like yesterday, I'm, I'm up in our kitchen and I'm reading up on the guests so that I can kind of, you know, not necessarily plan out the questions, but like know what direction to go into. And I remember reading about Dr. Jackie and thinking, whoa, this is, there's a lot here, right? Like her story her history, I never in a million years would think that I would have the opportunity to talk to somebody like that. It was just intense, and, but it awesome. And, it, and that's the awesome part about this. It's like, think about all those amazing people we've gotten to speak with that in our normal day-to-day -day life, we probably would never run in. Right. That, that to me is like the coolest part of our podcast. And I think what's really cool, not necessarily just about Dr. Jackie, but I remember in that episode, I'm learning, I'm seeing, like we get to see the people for who they are today, mm -hmm. right? And then we get to hear about how, what their past was like. And so even such a, I mean, I would say intense past for her parents and look at her now. She's so put together and she, she's not a victim of, whatever happened right like she is this beautiful wonderful person i just think that's so cool because it's not just her it's like every guest we see yeah and we get to talk to we get like almost like a what do i want to say like we're going back to the future right like yeah. we're like we see you today but we're going back and learning your story like it's crazy and i that to me is like really cool and you know getting a sense of like everything that they've been through and teaching us new lessons like I really depend on you to write stuff down because when I'm recording I'm like in the moment and I can't do two things at once I've tried I'm 60 now it's a lot harder to do at 60 than it probably was at like 45 I've got like blinders on I'm like I just need to focus on this one task <laughs> I think I have a little bit of late stage ADHD I'm not sure like, I'll be working on podcast stuff, and then I'll remember that there was something else that, you know, Lisa the Lesbian asked me to do, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> just got to go on hold. At least you remember that she asked you to do something. <laughs> Only because I wrote it down. <laughs> okay, look at you writing stuff down. I use my phone, so I text myself a message of stuff that I'm supposed to do. Otherwise, I forget. <laughs> so besides Dr. Jackie, we also had Barb. Barb, Barb and Carmel love barb and carmel i'm so proud of i'm so proud of her she's been winning a bunch of lit, literary awards for her books and really getting out there and you know showing people that therapy animals are so important not just for kids but for adults you know people in senior homes you know they're just pets are comforting and as much as yeah. my eight asshole cats you know our little assholes i still love them and like when i'm around them i feel they give me a sense of calm and i will say something about dr dr barb she comment comments on every single post we put on instagram <laughs> every single post she's like our I biggest cheerleader i love that so quick uh, side mission eight cats eight tell the listeners who your favorite cat is okay don't wow. say you can't pick so my favorite is Momo. She is our blind cat and she is the most resilient cat ever. She's cute. She can't see anything. She uses her senses to get around and she's just soft. So soft. But I try not to pet her because that girl, 
So the reason she smells like dryer sheets all the time is because she likes to roll around in the fucking litter box. Okay. Listen, girl, <laughs> go clean your shit. Okay. Don't roll on me. Let me go take 8,000 Zyrtec D when I'm done petting you, please. Aww. So that's like torture. A soft animal you can't pet. <laughs> <laughs> She's resilient and so are you. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get a stuffed version of her. Look, Momo. I was, sorry, side mission. We're back. I was thinking of Barb the, Barb the other day because my son is learning math. He loves math, by the way. Nice. Completely unlike his mom. So I'm like, yes, let's encourage this. <laughs> but we were trying to work through a math problem and we have a dog and he came over. His name is Mayor. He was named Mayor because Bizzle is obsessed with John Mayer. Shout out to John Mayer. I'm not obsessed with you, but other people are. Anyhow, so we were trying to teach him math using Mayer. And it was like, he couldn't be more focused. And I remember that being one of the things that Barb talked about in her episode. And I just was like, oh, I, I thought it was cool that I can think back on, on her yeah. in my life. Yeah, like she was, she's so passionate about the therapy animal program and just really out there. And she's an educator too herself and just, you know, bringing all that together so that people have a better understanding of how the process works, how it can really help children, especially, you know, I think she said it was like second graders, you know, helping them ease their fears and their tensions and anxiety and, just getting into the moment. And so I really love that. And then we had Bob. The episode where you and I laughed so hard. My face Our hurt. face hurt after. Uh-huh. And then we had to like record like two more sessions after that. <laughs> I have never had a deeper conversation about crickets in my entire Inversions. life. You know what though? Bizzle, I think, finally listened to it to that episode because at night like two or three nights ago he kept laughing about crooked legs being stuck in your teeth (laughs) he had a couple of gummies but he couldn't stop laughing and i'm like where is this coming from then i remember bob (laughs) and i i love that you know he was able to overcome some of his aversions so that you know he could have kids and you know, <laughs> so that it, I don't think that's why. But no, <laughs> so that he could have kids. So that he could have kids, and yeah. so that he could like enjoy life. And you know, it just as an adult, you know, life sucks anyway. But having those fears and those aversions, and and just making it through. And I really think that laughter is one of his coping me- mechanisms because I have never laughed so hard for yeah. for an entire hour. I mean, I've laughed with you, but I had tears rolling down my eyes because down my cheeks because he would not stop it was just like bang i'm like i am gonna die of laughter literally yeah i i remember texting you after that one saying my face hurts just from smiling through that whole episode and laughing through the whole thing yeah he was it was wonderful it was wonderful and i like that like i could relate to his story right like sometimes we think that yeah maybe there's something weird about this (laughs) but you don't really know right like you don't know and then when somebody points it out you're like oh yeah I guess maybe that's not normal (laughs) and I've I can relate to that (laughs) maybe what I'm saying is a bad thing I don't know let me go back and research this oh wait I don't have any time that's why I need an assistant (laughs) okay I, I hear you I need an assistant so this could be my audition tape for voice acting in your intro or job posting for an assistant (laughs) for an assistant we don't pay much because as i said (laughs) we don't really have a lot of sponsors except for think sickles which (laughs) think sickles which dirty skittles laughed about yeah i heard it on spotify i was like dang sickles this sounds like (laughs) g-rex oh my god i'm losing it today sorry i need a red bull break (laughs) and then we had joe and man being, li- being diagnosed late in life with bipolar and having to go through all that craziness. But I'm so proud of him for, you know, finding shit that works for him. Meditation and 
you know, watching his meds and, you know, looking for the signs because not everybody does that. You know, those are on that spectrum, bipolar disorder, right? Yeah, I think what my biggest takeaway, well, there was a bit of a self-reflective moment because I remember in that episode not really knowing what I could ask, right? Like I had so many questions. My brain just naturally, I want to know all of the things about everything. And I think I sometimes don't have a filter on what's appropriate to ask or not. And so in that episode, I remember us recording and I'm kind of, I was freezing mentally because I didn't know if all of my questions were necessarily appropriate and I didn't want to offend him. Right. I just, I'm so curious because I can't relate. Right. And so I'm like trying to like, oh my gosh, tell me more. But my biggest takeaway on that episode was despite how difficult it may be for someone taking the right steps to not only sure, you know, get your therapy or your psychiatrist or whatever you need, but like him learning his triggers and things that he needed to steer away from. Yeah. You know, it was huge. You, kudos to him because, you know, he's working through it and, you know, and I'm just, I'm really proud of him for, you know, sharing his story because I, I can only imagine how difficult that was for him. Right. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even put myself there. Like, I'm like, wow, that's so admirable. Right. Yeah. And it's proof that there is life after or through things. I shouldn't say after because I think you're constantly kind of working through it, but there is life through that. And, you know, even he said, you know, sharing his journey is therapy for him too, right? Because he really wants to get the message out there and let people know that there's tools and tips and tricks to get you through day to day and you know sharing our stories is so vitally important especially these days mental health is a huge topic and the more we get out there the the more people we're helping yeah and then we We talked about dr jackie we did talk about dr jackie and then we had justin and oh my god i loved Loved it loved him love i did i want i would like to revisit with him in the future. Yeah, me too. 2025 at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, 20, because 2024 is completely booked. I was inspired by his story because he didn't let his his upbringing take him down. He bettered himself yeah. and he's yeah. out there helping others, right? And helping the homeless and, you know, do, creating his nonprofit really and, you know, just living life and making a difference. And you know, realizing that, you know, sometimes life is not all roses, but it's what right. you do with that, what you do with that energy and that passion and facing those fears. Like some of the stuff he talked about, like jumping out of an airplane, fuck no, still never going to happen. Yeah, but he was so genuine. And like, I remember sitting there and like, it was very clear he was genuine. He was unapologetically himself and he was just vulnerable. That's what it was. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to be vulnerable. And I just admire that so much about him. And I think that the common thing that I've seen for, from season to season is that when people are sitting in front of a microphone versus face to face, they are way more vulnerable and way more willing to share more of themselves than they would with somebody probably in a face-to-face conversation. And I think that's why this medium is so important, right? Because we give people an outlet to share that journey and and share how they've bettered themselves, how they've gotten out of like a, a traumatic situation or how they're out there helping the world be a better place. Yeah, I mean, I give you guys so much credit. You too, like just there was two thoughts that ran through my mind as we were talking. One of them was like, I wonder what it is about opening up yourself to be vulnerable, like in this type of setting where we have a microphone and we're recording, right? Very weird, but it's true. Like I stand and I can tell from some of our guests that they are vulnerable, you know, and they have this mic and it's going out to hundreds of thousands of listeners or however many, the one person that's listening, (laughs) whoever it is though. And I'm just curious about that. But also how brave you guys are because after you share your story and people listen, instead of like shying away from ever talking about it again, you continue. And so I'm like, you're so brave. Not to make you cry again, but we keep trying to open the doors, 
right? And normalize yeah. these conversations because, you know, for years and years, they've been swept under the carpet. And now more than ever, these stories are important in these journeys because people are suffering. And if we yeah. can give them a resource to go get help or some sort of solace or even just a tiny bit of laughter in their day, it's it will make them feel better. Yeah. And then we had Cecile. We Cecil? we did have Cecile. I loved Cecile. Cecile. Oh my God. What a great I want to say it like with a French accent, but I'm not gonna that out. <laughs> <laughs> my ears are bleeding, please no. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I fangirl for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Because I just have to tell our, our listeners, I've only ever seen her up on stage in front of hundreds of people with a light looking just wonderful and confident and you know as you know my little female self I'm sitting in this chair watching her speak and thinking wow I want to be that brave one day to be up on stage just talking and fuck unstoppable so when I got to sit down in a more intimate setting I was like oh my god I fangirled a little bit it's like her and Viv yeah (laughs) Look, I have sweaty palms just thinking about it. <laughs> Incredibly socially awkward. <laughs> but she was so lovely, right? Like she had been traveling for like six weeks. She didn't know what time zone she was in. <laughs> but she was so happy. Yeah. And she looked so young, right? We were saying like she like that happiness, that genuine happiness from the inside out made her look so different. Yeah. than that confident woman on stage with all the lights. Like all of a sudden it was like there was a different energy to her. Yeah, she and she exuded it. And, yeah, you know, she was glowing. Talking about her, you know, her olives and her <laughs> travels. She was living my dream. And, and <laughs> like how she just doesn't really give a fuck about, you know, having to prove herself, right? Because people right. kept coming back to her. So what are you going to do next? What are you going to do? You know what? I'm not going to fucking do shit. What I'm going to yeah. do is enjoy my life. Yeah. And live it to the fullest. And, you know, people didn't really understand why she left when she did. But, you know, there were just circumstances yeah. that she needed to address. And she is so much better for it, right? Splitting her time between the States and France. Like, that doesn't fucking suck. You know, living your life. And, you know, it brings me back to, like, Bookie, you know, you you don't have to make a bucket list. If you live for today... That should be your bucket list, right? And that's what she's doing. She's living for today and and making those memories with her kids and her husband and her friends and traveling and living her fucking life. And you know what? People should be happy for that. Don't you, you don't have to be out there proving yourself. I mean, we don't do the podcast to prove, prove ourselves. I have nothing to prove. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm alive. And like I yeah. said, every day, I'm so very fucking thankful for that. Because I get yeah. to do this with you. No, thanks, dude. I get to do it with you too. And we get to laugh I mean, about dumb shit on the mornings that I call you. Yeah, that's my therapy. Like I should pay. Like <laughs> like my chat GPT unicorn, which was the best. Uh yeah, we gotta you know, share that with our listeners. <laughs> one day. One, one day. One day we'll share that fancy unicorn out. But then we had Paige and Paige was amazing. Okay, so in both Cecile's episode and in Paige's episode, both of our guests cried. But what I thought was really awesome is that they showed how vulnerable they were in the moment, but also let out a really important message during those times. And that, that, that to me, you know, shows growth and, you know, it's okay to cry. It really is. I just cried the other day out of sheer frustration, but I felt better after it. It was kind of cathartic, but, you know, it's a just story of, you know, just the mental illness that goes on within our medical community, right? Like, I don't people, I don't think people realize how stressful those jobs are, you know, <clears throat> and we all do get pissed off when we go to the emergency room and we got to wait for five hours, but, you know, it, it's we're understaffed, we're overworked, yeah. they're, and they just don't have the tools and the resources to help them deal with their own mental health. And 
I know. I love that she's out there trying to change that for other medical workers, you know, just with yeah. her her conferences and the, her speaking engagements. And she's right. out there trying to make a difference. And I commend, I'm, I commend her for that. Yeah, it was, I really enjoyed that that day and recording with her because I remember thinking or being curious, I wonder how many of our listeners will realize that they're not alone Yeah, in her story. And I just remember thinking that's super important. Like, you know, my past is not the same as what the story she shared, but I remember even in my own growth and becoming okay with my issues, one of the first steps was realizing, oh, I'm not alone. There are other people who feel like me and feel like this because this is happening to them too. And I think even for her, that was something that she had to learn that it was okay to be going through what she was going through. She's not a robot. She's not a soldier. She is a human and we have emotions and feelings and things will affect us. And taking that and turning it to something positive, spreading it. Yeah, I, she was so lovely. I remember when we did a pre-recording with her and she went out on to Instagram and was like blasting our name all over the place and like <laughs> how much fun we were. And I just, she has such cool energy, right? It just kind of, it kind of like transcends in, into you when you're, even when you're just doing a Zoom call. And I'm so, her episode was so good. So, so yeah. good. It felt like just a conversation for sure. Like I felt like we were all in the same room together, just sharing stories. Like it was really shooting the shit. And, you know, mm -hmm. that, and, you know, it's funny. I heard from Jack and Brad the other day and, you know, another, you know, two more huge lovers of the podcast. And they're like, yeah, every time I describe your podcast, it's just like, you know, people sitting around in the fireplace, shooting the shit, talking about yeah. life's crap. A night in with friends. It, it So, you know, and it's, we're easy. Like we don't, we're not clinical by any means. Yeah. We're not professionals by any means. But we're humans. But we're humans. And we're compassionate. Yes. Very. Empathetic. So yeah. some, uh, I'm only pathetic sometimes. Empathetic. Oh, empathetic. Yeah. I thought you called me pathetic. I'm like, <laughs> no, uh, empathetic. Oh, God. Well, chills because she calls me pathetic. Oh, shit. Uh, no, dude. No. I love you. Don't ever. Yeah. You're like, oh, I thought you were I so love you, man. <laughs> empathetic. <laughs> and then oh. we had Diane, and I, what I love about her journey is that she got away from her narcissistic mom and made a life for herself all on her own. Yeah. And she was so, it was such a warm conversation. And I, Diane, when you listen to this episode, I just want to say thank you for clicking on the links in the newsletter. It makes me happy. <laughs> Wow, you can see that? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can see what who opened it and if you clicked on any links. But I love <laughs> her story and just you know, being at one with nature and just finding the peace in your life. But damn, she really like did it all. She paid for school on her own, she got a job, she's written her book, and she found her happiness despite all the bullshit she went through as a kid and yeah. you know I think there's a lot of lessons in that right that mm -hmm. despite the trauma you've dealt with in, in your past like pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go make a life for yourself yeah you're gonna yeah. hit a thousand fucking bumps in the road but you get up you dust yourself off and you just keep moving forward yeah she was inspiring she inspired me I was very, I'm very much in my like go female era and her story and just like, and I know this is just a me thing. I don't think this is how she was thinking of it, but it was like, I think as like the underdog, sometimes I want people, I want to see that underdog succeed and be like, fuck you, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I uh, know it's kind of harsh for yeah. some reason, we, but we are not, you're not holding me down. I'm going to pick myself yeah. up. Up. Yes. I'm gonna dust myself off and I am gonna keep moving forward and find yeah. my own and like fucking happiness. Surpass, yeah. Surpass your expectations and my own. Right. Like I'm gonna do it so well, you'll never forget it. Yeah. Like that's the shit I love. So I love her episode. And, and then we had Susie. 
Susie. Another episode. Oh, can I just say, yes. Susie, if you're listening to this, I want us to be best friends. Okay. <laughs> Another episode where we laughed hard again, face hurting. Thankfully, it was the <laughs> last ep- episode of the day that we recorded. But, but we stayed on for a while afterwards. We did. And she is actually, she was a two-parter because we just couldn't, I couldn't cram it all into one. I tried, wasn't going to happen. The message was too important to uh, anything else. I loved how she had the insight as a kid, right? To recognize that a family member was struggling with mental health issues and then followed that passion all the way into adulthood and made it her mission to help others to help others out by you know get it she's a 988 crisis counselor and making that difference right and she gave me chills because well yeah i mean for you that's I guess not just you, but for anybody who's used that resource to be able to talk to somebody who's a part of that movement. Yeah. Um, did it not give calls? You know, thank God there is 988, right? Because not only can you call them, you can text them. They're on 24-7. They speak Spanish. There are 988 lines now in Canada. If you visit our website, there is a findahelpline.org. Help where you can click on that link and anywhere in the world, you can find somebody that can help you, right? 20 years ago, these types of resources weren't available. And I loved how vulnerable Susie was in that episode, you know, talking about her own mental health struggles and, you know, just getting through day to day and shout out to her. She does have a podcast, you know, check the show notes, all her information's out there. You can also check our website. Big props to her. She is quite a bit younger than I am. But, you know, getting out there and making a difference and having resources like that for, you know, any age group, we it's women supporting women. Yeah. Supporting mental health. You know, she's like us. We want to normalize these conversations. We want to get these stories out. You're not alone. You really aren't. You would be amazed how many people are out there suffering from some type of mental health issue. And the more you share, the more you're going to help somebody else that's going through that. Yeah. I I had chills for you in that episode. I was like, wow, you're getting to talk to your, it's almost like putting a face to something. Yeah. But realizing that they're humans, they're human beings, just the same as we are. So yeah. And I don't know. I just think it's cool. I mean, we've had a really great season. I'm looking forward to the future yeah. and what could possibly happen next because I don't think I can even, I couldn't have imagined that we would be where we are now. Right. I can't imagine where we will be as we continue. So and, I'm looking forward to the future. And, and like I said, I'm so blessed that I get to do this with you. You know, we feed off of each, uh, off of each other. We ask poignant questions. We laugh. Oh. And, you know, we... We're human. And we, like I said, I don't know what the future holds. Also, I know is that we're booked up like crazy. People that want to be on the podcast, I love you all. Believe me, I'm trying. Still need a personal assistant to help with this. Never thought I would be asking for that. But, you know, our PR firm is, you know, working to get us onto some big name shows. And we are also working on our, okay, Dirty skills just passed out, I think. <laughs> but we are also working on getting some of our dream guests on. You know, persistence does pay off. So someday you may hear like Mel Robbins or Gretchen Rubin <laughs> or Jay Shetty on this. You know, there's a lot of people out there that also suffer through mental health issues. And getting those stories out help people realize that they're really not alone. So it's not just the celebrities or public figures it's it could be joey down the street it could be your mom it could be your dad it could be a brother or sister or cousin you know yeah. let's normalize yeah. these conversations yeah we're all humans we're all in this life too we are thank you thank you hi all thank you so much for listening to this episode i'm g-rex And I'm Dirty Skittles. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. We'd love to listen 
to your feedback. We can't do this without you guys. It's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone. <laughs>